Hello! Today we are going to talk about Greek classicism, the foundation of modern European literature. Modern European literature began with the Renaissance in the 14th, 15th centuries. And the Renaissance writers of Europe based their works on Greek classical texts. Did you know Greek classical poets started composing poetry so long ago? The earliest known poet was Homer who lived around 800 BC, 800 years before Christ. And he wrote about the Trojan War. What is the Trojan War? Helen, the wife of the Greek hero Menelaus, eloped with the Trojan prince Paris. This led to big trouble. Greeks declared war on Troy. And then what happened? Fighting, fighting, fighting. For 10 long years, the Trojan War happened. But Homer's Iliad is about the last one week in the Trojan War. And then what happened? You won't believe it. The Trojans won. And they were drinking and making merry at night. The Greek heroes, they did not let go so easily. What they did is they brought a huge wooden horse inside which soldiers were hiding. You know the story, the Trojan horse it is called. And at night, the Greek soldiers came out, killed the Trojans. Greeks won the war. This story was told by Homer in the Iliad. And there is a sequel to the Iliad, Odyssey, which is about the journey of Odysseus after the Trojan War, back home to Ithaca. These two epics laid the foundations of Western literature. Homer lived in the ancient period called Archaic period. This is the time that came after the Greek Dark Ages. At that time, Homer was not the only poet. There were also other poets, Sappho, Hesiod, etc. But it was a time of great injustices, ignorance. People lived almost like animals. Civilization was just coming into being. But by the 6th century BC, that is roughly 200-300 years after Homer, civilization really flourished and it gave rise to the classical period in Greece. Wow! Time of brilliance! Philosophy, poetry, so many of the contemporary disciplines in our society came into being in the classical period. The classical period is the time of the tragedians, Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides. There were also philosophers, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. We have heard all these names. They are very important in any study of literature. And after the classical period, what happened? Greece politically declined. You know, there was a lot of fighting among the city-states in Greece. Corruption. Degeneration. Because of that, Greece politically declined and Roman Empire flourished. Rome and Gre Greece are kind of neighbors. Roman Empire flourished and Romans began to follow the Greek classical ideals. So after the Greek classical period came the Roman classical period. I will talk about the Roman classical period in the next video. Now let me talk about Greek classicism in detail. So, as I told you, Greek classicism began with Iliad. It was an oral composition about the last one week in the Trojan War. At that time, what is happening? The two Greek heroes, Achilles and Agamemnon are fighting. What kind of fighting? Quarreling. 
Achilles is a man who is very angry and wants to teach Agamemnon a lesson. You know why? Because Agamemnon and Achilles both want the same female slave. And Achilles says, I'm not going to fight. Because Agamemnon is not giving me that slave. And then what happened? Achilles' dear friend Patroclus is wounded in the war by the Trojan hero Hector. Then Achilles cannot keep quiet. He goes to war, kills Hector, drags his dead body through the battlefield for three days. This is the worst one can do to a human being to deny burial. Achilles did that. And everybody said, please bury Hector's body. This is so bad. Finally, you know what Achilles did? Achilles asked for Hector's weight in gold. Then only he let Hector be buried. So all this is the story of Iliad. The 10 years of war is all told in flashback. Greatest epic. Written in brilliant style in dactylic hexameter which inspired so many literary works later. And the Odyssey, we know the story of Odyssey more because of Tennyson's Ulysses and James Joyce's Ulysses, same story. Odysseus in Greek, it is called Odyssey, he is called Odysseus. In Latin, he is called Ulysses. After the Trojan War, he is journeying back home to Ithaca. Like today, there are no aeroplanes or express trains. He took 10 years to travel back to Ithaca. And then what happened? He had a lot of fighting to do on the way. Meanwhile, his wife Penelope and son Telemachus were having a bad time. They had enemies, uh, threats from the enemies. Their enemies wanted to marry Penelope. She was weaving a wedding gown, trying to put away the enemy, saying, when the wedding gown is finished, I will marry one of you. What she did at night, she is unraveling the uh, weaving that she did. So the wedding gown never got completed. Penelope's web, it is called. And finally, Ulysses comes home. But then he wants to go again because he's enamored of adventure and travel. This is what Tennyson has written about in his famous poem, Ulysses. And these two epics were probably not the only works by Homer. Homer probably wrote Batriomachia or the Battle of Frogs and Mice. It is a mock epic. Yo, the man who wrote the greatest epics wrote a mock epic also probably. It is a pseudo-Homeric work. We are not sure whether Homer wrote it. Sappho at this time is a female poet from Lesbos and in the Greek classical period the writers imitated Homer, looked upon Homer as the greatest master and now let us talk about the classical period itself. In the 6th century BC there was a brilliance in Athens, one of the city-states of Greece. Understand that Greece is an archipelago. What do you mean by archipelago? Archipelago means a group of islands. So each of these small, small islands is like a city-state. Did you understand? The most powerful among them was Athens. Athens was ruled by Pericles, powerful tyrant. And there was a flowering of learning, art, literature in Athens at this time. This is the beginning of the classical period. It was at that time that tragedy developed. Later, Aristotle said tragedy is the best art form, isn't it? Tragedy developed in relation to city Dionysia, a festival, a religious festival in honor of Dionysius, the god of wine and merrymaking. Dionysius, Greek god. In Rome, he is called Bacchus. In city Dionysia, there was a lot of merriment, there was a lot of enjoyment and there was a ritual. Every 
buddy who wants to take part there's a competition everybody who wants to take part can present three tragedies and one satire play or comedy and the man who first got the first prize in this competition was Aeschylus the father of tragedy he is you know they were required to present three tragedies that is why ancient Greek tragedies are all trilogies Aeschylus's most famous trilogy as you probably know is Orestia the story of Agamemnon coming home his wife kills him because she had a grudge against Agamemnon Agamemnon sacrificed their daughter Iphigenia his wife did not like that who is his wife are none other than the twin sister of Helen of Troy she is Clytemnestra oh my god these two women Helen of Troy destroyed ancient Rome sorry ancient Greece with Trojan war now Clytemnestra is destroying uh, the house of Agamemnon it is called house of Atreus and uh, Agamemnon's children Orestes and Electra did not keep quiet Orestes and Electra took revenge on their mother Orestes killed his mother and it is very wrong to kill one's mother of course Orestes is haunted by the furies or human ideas this is the story of Orestia three plays Agamemnon Koiferoi or libation bearers and Eumenides or the Furies Aeschylus has written other plays also for example Prometheus Bound Sophocles is the author of the Theban trilogy the Theban trilogy as all of you might know is the story of Oedipus Oedipus Rex or Oedipus the King poor man he had a Delphic oracle which said he will kill his father and marry his mother so sad isn't it if this is your destiny Oedipus who is the king of Thebes at the beginning of the play is worried because all his citizens the citizens of Thebes are suffering from plague God why are you giving my people plague he wanted to know he sent his brother-in-law Creon to the oracle and Creon came back and said the murderer of the previous king Laius has to be punished that is why there is plague here Oedipus is the king he said of course I'll punish him Tiresias tell me who is the murderer of, of Laius you know everything tell me Tiresias Tiresias the blind prophet said I can't tell you I won't tell you Oedipus got so angry he has the right to know the truth I can know the truth I am powerful look at his hubris or pride he pursued the truth and finally came to know that he himself is the murderer and that the previous king Laius is his father oh my god and he had married the widow queen and that is his mother Jocasta look at the destiny of Oedipus Oedipus blinded himself Jocasta killed herself this is the famous tragedy Oedipus Rex following which Oedipus is exiled blind Oedipus is exiled from Thebes and he dies that is the story of Oedipus at Colonus and which is the third play tell me Antigone Oedipus' daughter Antigone stands up against state power stands up against the king Creon remember Creon brother-in-law of Oedipus also uncle of Oedipus because wife is also mother Creon decided that Antigone's two brothers died when Antigone's two brothers died Creon decided that one of them can be buried the other cannot be buried leave him at the gates because Creon hated him Antigone goes against the state power and buries her brother wow what a powerful woman standing up against the king she buries her brother and then kills herself that is a famous play Antigone no wonder Theban trilogy is so famous isn't it we should read it wow such a deep 
depiction of human nature of man power you know human power such characters with grit and courage and moral fervor wow the third tragedian euripides also created such a powerful woman character in his play medea medea you know what she did medea was married to jason jason left her for another woman she killed jason's bride and her father died because of it then she killed her own children to take revenge on her husband well whether it is right or wrong to kill one's children to take revenge on one's husband is another issue but what a powerful woman character at this time there was a writer of comedies aristophanes aristophanes also created powerful women characters but aristophanes did other things that we cannot agree for example he criticized socrates we all love socrates he was a wonderful sweet a philosopher and Aristot aristophanes attacked socrates he is a liar he is a sophist in which play in the clouds another play is there by aristophanes the frogs why is it called the frogs of all things because there is a chorus of frogs there in the frogs you won't believe what happens dionysius the king of merriment and wine remember Dionysius himself is going to Hades. Hades is hell in Greek mythology. Dionysius is going to Hades to bring back the best playwright from Hades because at this time there are no good playwrights. Drama has become so degenerate. He wants to bring back from death the best playwright. And there is a debate between who is the best playwright, Aeschylus or Euripides. Dang 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 debate. Obviously who wins? Who wins? Aeschylus the father who won Aeschylus won I would say Euripides is the better playwright you know why because Euripides depicted characters and gods in a new way he questioned the status quo and there was a lot of rebelliousness in Euripides's plays actually anyway there is another interesting play by Aristophanes Lysistrata you won't believe what happens there you know these greek masters even though they were so old so many thousands of years ago they lived even then they were so brilliant the peloponnesian war is happening who is creating war men of course men is war necessary never never is war necessary war is unnecessary it destroys a society aristophanes knew that thousands of years later still like primitive savages we still create war isn't it we shouldn't we don't need war we don't need to kill innocent people do we the women in lysistrata they understood that war is unnecessary they decided to stop war you know how they decided to stop giving sexual favors to their men no man can get sex in that country because women are refusing wow that is a wonderful powerful thing to do lysistrata is their leader war stops <laughs> what a comedy isn't it this kind of comedies that aristophanes wrote were actually based on real incidents real people hmm socrates is a real man for, ex for example that kind of comedy came to be called old comedy you know why obviously because a new comedy emerged after that a new comedy was written by the writer menander menander did not base his comedies on real people and incidents then what else would he have done tell me if you don't write about real people and incidents how else can you write a comedy menander based his comedies on stereotypical characters stereotypical characters bastards slaves wit and sparkle of dialogue have you heard these features anywhere else menander's new comedy which had these features laid the foundations of comedy of manners have you heard of comedy of manners comedy of manners also employs stereotypical characters witty dialogues 
comedy of manners did not suddenly flourish in one period and end in that period no comedy of manners existed throughout european history shakespeare has written comedy of manners later people down to oscar wilde and gb shaw have also written comedy of manners do you know the high point of comedy of manners the best brilliant period of comedy of manners is the restoration period in english history restoration period means what end of 17th century if you are thinking oh my god i don't know english history when is 17th century what happened doesn't matter in our coming videos we will say all these things don't worry i am just introducing you a few things comedy of manners reached its peak in the end of the 17th century restoration period the time in which monarchy was restored under charles the second why monarchy was restored because monarchy had ended before that in between there was a time without any king the puritans were ruling that is why oh my god 17th century was such a period of turmoil political turmoil fighting civil war in england i can't tell you that story now because today's topic is greek classicism you have to wait but better still whatever we are saying in the video take down read extra will you do that research on your own read on your own we are laying a proper foundation here but what i tell you is only the foundation we will build a solid foundation based on which you should build your castle your own castle your own palace i don't want to build that for you you should build it your career is that palace and you are going to reign there isn't it good to think about it like that so this foundation should be strengthened with your own reading and research everything we are saying today in this video please read extra so we were talking about menander menander wrote new comedy using stereotypical characters and menander inspired comedy of manners the high point of comedy of manners is restoration comedy remember this is the time not only of drama or tragedy and comedy this is the time of philosophy also socrates is the most important philosopher what are the books that socrates wrote where did he print them tell me you can type in the comments box it's a trick question because socrates was illiterate he never wrote a single book <laughs> obviously he did not publish any book either did i trick you there socrates was illiterate he didn't know anything he just sat he didn't even take bath he didn't help his wife at home he just sat in the city square like a beggar or a poor man and he will sit there ask people passers by questions leading questions very intelligent questions pretending that he didn't know anything he will ask questions and get the passers by the people who gathered around him to tell the correct answers that is a brilliant method of teaching hmm you know when we play with children sometimes there is the picture of an elephant and you will tell the child oh this is a cow and the child will say no it is an elephant and you will say no it is a cow because the, this animal has horns the child will say no the cow has horns here elephant has horns here these are not horns you know like that the child will teach you this is the method that socrates used this method is called socratic irony the teacher pretends that he doesn't know anything and gets the students the learners the people to tell the correct answers they reach the truth by themselves this is a question answer method called dialectical method dialectics have you heard of that very important term in literary theory in marxism dialectics is there dialectical materialism don't worry when we talk about literary theory we'll talk about all that dialectical method you understood question answer method socrates said a lot of things 
but if he never wrote a single book how do we know about it because all that we know about socrates is what plato has told us plato and one another another student of socrates were there was there they wrote about socrates socrates is a character in their works it there was also the debate people debated did socrates really exist or is he just a character are we know he existed we believe in socrates don't we the cutest philosopher in the world actually <laughs> and you know plato wrote all his books i shouldn't say wrote because most of it was oral plato composed all his books in the form of dialogues dialogue means always people are talking and who is talking socrates is talking to others socrates is the main character talking to others that's why they are called dialogues and socrates will discuss something with others others will say something socrates will refute it dialectical method all of you probably know that the greatest of all plato's dialogues is the republic where he talks about poetry well that is not the only work where he talks about poetry plato talks about poetry in ion also i o n ion have you heard i am sure you know about it ion is a rhapsody or a poet sorry a singer or reciter who sings the poems of homer homer will compose his iliad and odyssey other people will overhear homer and they will start singing the same poems from them other people will learn these people who sing the great poets compositions they are called rhapsodies uh plato's phaedrus is also very important there he talks about writing and speech which is a very important thing in structuralism and post structuralism it all started with greek classicism i'm telling you and uh, plato was the teacher of aristotle why teacher because plato had a school of himself he started a school called academy where aristotle was a student and then a teacher and uh, plato in republic talked about justice an ideal just republic he is talking about or commonwealth or country and he says that when a country is just the individuals will be just when the individuals are just only then the country will be just it is mutually complementary and in a just country philosophers should rule are plato lived at a time when poetry had become corrupt people were misusing poetry great poetry had ended plato said it is better we don't have poetry in the commonwealth because there are chances that poetry will corrupt the people so in book 3 as well as in book 10 he suggests that poets are not needed in the commonwealth in book 10 he says poets should be banished from the commonwealth and he says if anybody wants to refute this and argue the case for poetry then you are welcome it was aristotle who talked about it he praised poetry and showed that poetry is great aristotle in poetics talks about mimetic poetry mimesis is imitation that plato had already talked about every art is mimesis and the greatest of mimetic arts is tragedy aristotle talks about it in poetics tragedy he defines it he talks about the constituent elements of tragedy he talks about the tragic hero and he shows that oedipus rex is an ideal tragedy plato and aristotle laid the foundations of literary criticism and there were also a few other writers in the greek period one is pindar pindar wrote lyric poetry called odes pindaric odes are very formal encomiastic odes encomiastic means in praise of somebody or something in the roman classical period all these greek classical compositions were imitated 
Pindaric odes were imitated by Homer, Horace in the Roman classical period and Horatian odes came into being. So the Greek classical period is a time of great brilliance. It laid the foundations of all the major disciplines and it led to Roman classicism. Greek classicism gave importance to values and rules of composition of genres and classicism became a mode of writing in art a mode of composition in art and literature classicism flourished in the renaissance period in the neoclassical period in various ways and in the 19th century in europe emerged another movement which is often considered the counter or opposite of classicism and it is called romanticism so classicism is about order rules classicism is about morality classicism has certain genres like epic tragedy pastoral poetry in greek classical period there was the father of pastoral poetry also he was theocritus theocritus was later imitated and theocritus inspired the roman master virgil so theocritus and virgil are considered the fathers of pastoral poetry so this was a brief and deep introduction to greek classicism i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you are motivated to read more about it next topic we'll deal with will be roman classicism until then bye bye